input-output interface. Hello, learners. In this lecture, we are going to discuss input-output interfacing. Let's discuss the meaning of interfacing first. If we want to use input-output devices, there must be something between the input-output device and the system, which is called interface. Interfacing is the way to transfer information in various ways and communicating without having a deadlock. We can also define it as the effective way of communication in the real-time scenarios. It includes addressing, protocols, arbitration, addressing. The data sent by the processor over the specific address line which just tells about the device for which the data is meant. Protocols. Protocols mean some set of rules. For effective communication between two devices or between processor and devices, some set of formal rules were defined to describe how to transfer data. Examples of some protocols for read and write operations are For read, we have the CPU must send the memory address. The read line must be enabled. The processor must wait till the memory is ready, then accept the bits in the data lines. For write, the CPU must send the memory address. The write line must be enabled. The processor sends the data over the data lines. The processor must wait till the memory is ready. Now let's move to arbitration. Sometimes, when same set of address, control, or data lines are shared by different peripherals, then the bus arbitration is necessary. Bus master has access to the bus arbitration. Whenever any peripheral wants to access the bus, it sends a global request on the bus to all nodes to the master node for access of the bus called as bus request. Then, the node currently using the bus will respond with either a bus busy signal if it is so using the bus, or bus grant signal if the bus is free. The direct memory access, or DMA, can transfer the data between various input-output devices and memory without intervention of processor. As CPU is the master, DMA sends a bus request to the CPU. When the bus request is granted, it transfers the data on the bus. After the completion of transfer of data, it passes the control back to the CPU. An interface circuit is required to connect input-output bars with peripheral devices. Each interface decodes the address and control received from the input-output bars, interprets them from peripherals and provides signals for the peripheral controller. Each peripheral has its own controller that operates the particular electrochemical device. The interface circuit consists of address decoder, control circuits, data registers and status registers. The address decoder is used to select a peripheral. Control circuit is used to issue commands to the devices to give instructions about the task to be accomplished. Data registers are used to store data into or read data from data registers. Two data registers are DIN and DOU out. That is data in and data out. Status registers used to check the status of the devices using SIN. These are used to check the status of the devices using SIN or status in and SOU out flags or status out flags. There are four types of commands that an interface may receive. 1. Control commands. They are used to activate the peripheral and to inform it what to do. 2. Status commands. They are used to test various status conditions in the interface and the peripherals. 3. Output data. It causes the interface to respond by transferring data from bars into one of the registers. 4. Input data. The interface receives an item of data from the peripheral and places on the data lines. After the discussion about interfacing, now let us get an idea about input-output ports. We have a data path available for the communication between the input-output devices and the interfaces. The path is called port. There are two types of ports available. 1. Serial port. The serial port sends and receives data one bit at a time. 2. Parallel port. It receives number of bits, that is 8 bits or 16 bits, simultaneously from the input-output devices or sends to the input-output devices. Parallel input-output port or parallel communication interface or PCI. Parallel interface can be explained in a better way 
with the help of some examples. And the processor sends some data bytes to a printer or device connected via parallel port. It sends 1 byte or 8 bits of data at a time. When the processor sends some data bytes to a printer or other devices connected via parallel port, it sends 1 byte or 8 bits of data at a time. These 8 bits are transmitted parallel to each other on the data bus. Standard parallel port is capable of sending 50 to 100 kilobits of data per second. Advantages 1. It can transmit multiple bits simultaneously. 2. It does not require any high frequency operation. Now, the disadvantages. 1. It requires 8 separate lines for the transmission of 8 bits at a time. 2. It is costly to implement because multiple wires are used. 3. It also suffers from the electromagnetic interference. Applications. Parallel ports can be used to connect various popular input-output devices such as scanners, printers, disk drivers, external hard drives, network adapters, and tape backup drives. Types of parallel ports. At the present time, four types of parallel ports are available. 1. Standard parallel ports or SPP. 2. Parallel port PS2 or bidirectional. 3. Enhanced parallel ports or EPP. 4. Extend Capability Port or ECP, Serial Input Output Port or Serial Communication Interface, SCI, Synchronous Data Transmission. Data is transmitted one bit at a time using the clock to maintain integrity between two different weights. Advantages 1. Only one or half duplex or two, that is, full duplex wires required to send or receive data. 2 low cost due to low number of wires. Disadvantages Lower speeds than parallel transmissions and difficulty to maintain data integrity due to problems with synchronizing clocks. Asynchronous data transmission Data is transmitted on bit at a time using start bits and stop bits to maintain integrity between two different weights. To know about SCI, you should know the following. Board rate the measure of the number of signal elements transmitted or received per second. Board rates and data bit rates or BPS bit per second are not equal in asynchronous transmission due to the start and stop bits. Start bit. The bit preceding every word that signals the receiver a data word is coming. In some microcontroller, example HC11, the start bit is logic low or zero while in others the start bit is logic high or 1 parity bit a bit sometimes added to the end of the data word there are three possible settings for the parity none even and odd the setting represents the sum of the ones transmitted stop bit the bit or bits following every word that signals the end of a data word in some microcontrollers example ac11 the stop bit is logic high or 1 while in others, the start bit is logic low or zero, half duplex. Two-way serial communication using only one line. With half duplex, the input-output device cannot transmit and receive at the same time. Full duplex. Two-way serial communication using two lines. With full duplex, data can be simultaneously transmitted and received. Applications of SCI. 1. The SCI can be used to transmit or receive data through a modem. 2. The SEI can be used to transmit or receive data with any device that uses RS-232C protocol. Suppose the number 45 in hex to be sent via 8 bits asynchronous format with odd parity. Then first 45 in hex is converted into the binary which is 01000101 in binary. This binary number is sent via bus. Keep in mind that the least significant bit, LSB, is sent first. The result is displayed below. Since there are already three ones in the data word, the parity bit would be set to zero to mean the parity is odd. By convention, the least significant bit of the word is sent first and the most significant bit is sent last. When communicating, the sender encodes each word by adding a start bit in front and one or two stop bits at the end. Sometimes, it will add a parity bit 
between the last bit of the word and the fit. This is used as a data integrity check. This is often referred to as data frame. Five different priority bits can be used. The mark priority bit is always set at a logical one. The space priority bit is always set at a logical zero. The even priority bit is set to logical one by counting the number of bits in the word and determining if the result is even. In the odd priority bit, the priority bit is set to logical one if the result is odd. The last two methods offer a means of detecting bit level transmission errors. Note that you don't have to use priority bits, thus eliminating one bit in each frame. This is often referred to as non-priority bit frame. Thank you, learners, and see you in our next lecture.